Welcome to the Sexy Freedom Media Podcast. A place to discuss pain, passion, and pursuits. Yes, yes. I want to feel alive. Breathe. Make some moves. Protect the throne. This is Sexy Freedom Media Podcast. Welcome, everybody, to the Sexy Freedom Media Podcast. It's your host, Helen Edwards and Anyway, Liddell, aloha. Awesome. Thank you, everybody, for being here and choosing us today. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, please do so now. We appreciate you. We have an exciting show today. January, what are we going to talk about? Well, we are talking about empowering our minds. Um, there are so many things that are happening in our world today that we can get sucked into any negative story that we, you know, that we capture on the news. And so today we have three of our favorite, three of Helen's favorite, and three of my favorite empowering mantras or quotes that we'd like to share with you. Helen, what are your top three? Okay, my top three. If it's to be, it's up to me. The second one is don't just talk about it, be about it. Woo. And my third, protect the throne, the mind, body, soul. January, what are your three? Yes. Oh my gosh. I can't wait to talk about those. Okay. My top three are, you may not control all the events that happen to you, but you can decide not to be reduced by them. That's by Maya Angelou. Number two. Think like a queen. A queen is not afraid to fail. Failure is another stepping stone to greatness. That's by Oprah. And number three, time is more valuable than money. You can get more money, but you cannot get more time. That's by Jim Rohn. Ooh, spicy. <laughs> I love to talk. So let's talk about your number one. What's your number one? If it's to be, it's up to me. Mm, okay so why is that a favorite quote of yours to say when times you're getting kind of uh this one really hit me way back in the day about mm, 20 years ago when I was first kind of starting on this higher conscious journey and reading books and I don't remember exactly where I saw it but I do remember how it gave me so much conviction about taking responsibility for my own life and I also had heard along the lines, responsibility is power. And I remember hearing that and that kind of just said, uh, you know, I heard this big voice, like take responsibility for your actions. And if you, if you're not doing what you need to do to get to where you need to go, then that's your responsibility. And at that moment, I was like, wow, if it's to be, it's up to me. I cannot rely on everybody else to help me get to where I want to go. I've got to figure this out on my own. I am capable of doing it. So if it's to be, it's up to me. I like that because you're putting ownership to you, to like ourselves. Like nobody can get, nobody can tell us like what to do or how to be or how to, I guess they can, but then you're not being your authentic self, right? And when you don't own up to your responsibility, then I feel you're, you're feeling not you're failing yourself, right? If you don't take ownership for like your own mistakes or whatever. But I love what you say. It's, if it's up to me, it's, I mean, if it's meant, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. If it's to be, it's up to me. It's to be, it's meant, it's up to me. If it's to be, it's up to me. Right? Yes. <laughs> Destiny. We can create it. The choices that we make, we can create however we like our life to be. But it's all, yes. up, it's all up to us. It's like, we, we got to think it. We got to think it and get out of our way. It's like that phrase, take your power back. You take your power back. All that energy you have that you basically give freely to everybody else. You take that back and give it to yourself. Imagine where you can be. Imagine what you can do. And mm. say to yourself, if it's to be, it's up to me. <laughs> to be. It's up to me. All right, January, what's yours? Your first right, one. My first one. My first one is you may not control all the events that happen to you, but you can just decide not to be reduced by them. So it's similar to yours. It's really up to us to create, you know, the life that we want. So um, it's kind of like that quote that I put last night. It's uh, on my on my Facebook 
life is happening for me, not to me. Um, and this is same, very similar. You may not control all the events that happen to you, but you can decide not to be reduced by them. There are so many people that I can think of um, that have been so resilient, even after either losing their limbs or not having limbs at all. Um, and, and they're so positive and they're so motivating and empowering. Um, they don't let whatever has happened to them, like whatever, you know, like debilitating, like not having limbs and debilitating diseases and whatever they don't, they, uh, they surpass that and they go above and beyond it because they know that even though that there's this, there's this thing that's happening to them, you know, in terms of no limbs and whatever disease that they're having, they still make life to be the way they choose to, the way they want it to be. And that, that gives me hope. And that gives me, um, strength knowing that if they can do it, I can do it too. Like if they can go, uh, you know, above and beyond their disease or their no limbs, then what's stopping me? Right. Like you said, that last part really hit home. If, but you can decide not to be reduced by whatever events are happening in your life. And I feel like that can speak so much volume to all of us. And, and no matter where you're at in life, if you are getting yelled at by your partner, if you are getting yelled at by your boss, if you're overstressed from your clients, if you are stressed out by your kids, if you have road rage, if you have a road rager next to you, <laughs> it, it, every given situation, something doesn't go your way. You didn't get the email you wanted. Something is not happening that you wanted, you know, that you thought would happen in your direction. Don't be reduced by that. And I mentioned the whole road raging thing because I always tell people, if you yell at somebody who's in another car, they basically, they have power over you. You've given them power over you. And that reduces you if you let them do that to you and take you to your lowest point. You have more power. Don't let people reduce you. Ooh, I love that. I love that. Okay. Number two, Helen, let's talk about your number two. Okay. Number two, don't just talk about it, be about it. Ooh. Okay. Look, this one's really big to me because, because I was really, how should I say this? I put myself on a high standard list or I have high expectations of myself. That's probably the best way to say it. And before I can expect more from others, I've got to, I've got to meet myself at the same place. I've got to reach the same level. And I'm a doer. I like to, whatever I say I'm going to do, I like to do it. And that's actually how I've achieved so much in life. If I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. And if there's a reason why I haven't done it, there's got to be a really, really good reason. And it's usually a reason that is to protect my own energy, protect my own throne, to protect my own self, or just because I have decided not to do it because it's not really going to benefit me at that time or at all. So if it's going to, um, do you, oh, gosh, I, <laughs> I was going back to the very first one. <laughs> so don't just talk about it, be about it. It's so important to me that I'm also, I also surround myself with people who say something and then they do what they said they are going to do because flaking we the term flaking is kind of an adolescent term back in the day we had a lot of friends in our circle who were always flaking all the time and it really frustrated us and now we're all grown women we're at the point in our life where we can be 100 with each other and say i'm going to do this and we know that person is going to follow through and same thing if they don't follow through we know there's a damn good reason why they have it. And they're usually going to tell us and not lie about it because now we're grown women. We're queens. Right. So there's a quote by Jim Rohn and it says, we are the top five. We are the average of the five people we spend the most time with. 
So it's important to surround yourself with people who are empowering and people who are who actually know more than you. When you surround people with people that know more than you, uh, then that also helps you grow, right? So don't be about it. Uh, don't talk about it. Be about it. I'm the same way, Helen. You know I'm the same way. I'm a doer as well. Um, I remember when I was uh, when I first started as a financial strategist. Um, I, I have this identity issue. And the reason why I had the identity issue is because I was a health coach prior to being a financial strategist. So to meld the two, I was like, God, how? And so I just had to be about it. I just had to say, you know what? I am a financial strategist. I am a retirement specialist. Yes, let me go this way. And, but I had to make that decision. I think in all life aspects, the key factor is to make that decision. So be, don't talk about it, be about it, make that decision to be about whoever, whatever you choose to be. Okay, my number two. My number two is um, think like a queen. A queen is not afraid to fail. Failure is another stepping stone to greatness. Ooh, I love that. And why did you, why is this one of your top three? You know, Helen, I think since we've met, um, you have empowered me and inspired me to think and be like a queen. I mean, prior to that, I, I've known, I've heard of that phrase, you know, I've, I've thought about it. Um, I always said I'm a daughter to a king, right? So a queen. So thinking like a queen, a queen is not afraid to fail. A queen is empowered. A queen is strong. And um, she is the ruler of that land. And being the ruler of that land, even if she makes a decision that may not be um, the best decision, still, you know, like it says, failure is a stepping stone to greatness. And I don't think of it as a failure. I think of it as, okay, well, that didn't work. Let me do something else. So it's not necessarily a failure, but it's like, all right. It's like a scientist, right? Scientists, they do all these different experiments until they get to the final one, but they, it takes several different, um, tries to do it. And so, yeah, don't think of failure as a failure, but think of it as I'm a queen. I made the decision. So be it. Ooh, I love that. <laughs> I thought about the game of chess for a second. I'm a huge lover of chess. I taught my son how to play chess. I grew up playing chess. And my mom actually would tell us stories about the queen on the chessboard. And she'd say, look, the king can only move northeast, northeast, southwest, but the queen can move anywhere, everywhere, diagonal, front, back. Like it, I was like, wow, that's so cool. And she goes, you're a queen. We're queens. Women are queens. And I was like, what? Me? And I love that you said that. Think like a queen. So when... I tend to think like a queen in all areas. I also think of the chessboard because life is sometimes for me, I view it as a game sometimes. What move am I going to make today? And like you said, fail, get back up, keep going because that's, you can get your queen back in the game of chess and you can get your queen back in this, in this game as well, the game of life. I think failure is just, um, it's only if you quit, like if you quit, then I feel like that's like complete failure because you're, you're giving up, you know? So that to me is like failure. But if you, if you continue to get back up and say, you know what? I didn't do it this time. Okay. Let me try something else and do something else. And oh shoot, that didn't work either. All right, let me try something else. But as long as you keep that mind frame of failure is a stepping stone to greatness then each of the times that it seems like a failure, you know, we just think, nah, it's a stepping stone to my greatness. And I will be, I mean, I'm still a queen. So it doesn't matter because I'm still, I'm, I'm going to my greatness. I'm filling in that greatness. All right. Let's talk about number three. What's your number three, Helen? So funny. We're talking about queens because protect the throne is my third one. Protect the throne. First of all, this kind of came from everybody calling themselves queen and king and all, you know, nobody wants a joker <laughs> in relationships. So I remember thinking, okay, you are a queen, you are a king, but who's protecting your throne? Your mind, body, spirit is your throne. Who's protecting it? Who does all the protection for 
the throne. Is it the queen? Is it the king? It's the warrior. The warrior is the one protecting the mind, body, spirit. The warrior is protecting the throne of the king and the queen. And you can be, uh, and I actually kind of started thinking about this more in depth when I started thinking about the, um, the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. And I started thinking about that whole, uh, that whole conversation that Jesus said on that whole subject. And I just thought that makes sense. But in my own terms, in this, in the new spirituality that, you know, the new age movement, mind, body, soul, who is protecting this, who you can, you can go and say you're a queen and a king all day long. But if your warrior is not doing the warrior's job, your throne is being attacked. You are allowing people to reduce you. You are allowing yourself to be reduced. You're allowing yourself to be broke. You're allowing your spirit to be crushed. You're allowing your soul to be empty, your cup to be empty. Like all of these things are happening to you. And sometimes by default, because you don't have a warrior within you to protect yourself. So protect the throne. Hmm. So you're saying, what I hear you saying is that there's a queen in our throne, in our castle, but there's another side to it because as, as women or as human beings in general, we're multifaceted. We're not just one thing. So what you're saying, what I hear you saying is that there's the warrior inside each of us. And that warrior is the fighter that fights for what is right, that fights for the protection of our throne, our heart, our soul, our mind, our mm-hmm. spirit, right? Oh, is yeah. That- oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, you said it just right. It, I mean, it can also be said as masculine, feminine energy and that energy that is on the outside that kind of protects you. Uh, I also use the analogy, if you're on the warrior, fi- if you're on the battlefield, and let's just say me and you, January, let's just say me and you are on the battlefield and you get wounded. Am I strong enough to pick you up and help you in that moment? Or am I going to stand there and say, you know, I'm not ready yet. I'm not really sure if I'm strong enough to help you. No, I'm going to like kick in that instinct, that fighter instinct to kick in and help you. I'm going to use the fighter instinct to help myself when I am in trouble. And that's why you hear all of these amazing transformation stories of women and men who have been able to get themselves out. Like you said, the one, you know, people who don't have limbs and they're able to get past that and move forward. It's because something in them said, I'm stronger. I'm greater. I can do this. I, I'm capable, you know, and, and the warrior can be another word for God spirit. It can be, it could be warrior. It can be a different archetype. It can be anything. Yeah. I think the whole idea is, um, somebody, there's another spirit, another something energy that's inside of you that, um, wants to continue going and fighting, you know, for what is right and to, you know, to protect the, the innards of our soul and the, everything that's about us. So I, I love that. I love that. Protect the throne. And if you haven't gotten your affirmations card, I don't know if Helen still has it, but she has these amazing affirmation cards, um, protect the throne. And she's written all of these affirmations on there. They're, they're hand written and the, the cards are designed by her. Um, if you haven't gotten in yet, please reach out to Helen and grab those affirmation cards. I love reading them. Um, my daughter and I read them together. So it's nice. Uh, so please get them. All right. Number three. Did we talk about our number three? Did I talk about my number three? I don't think so. Your number three. Your final number three. (laughs) All right, here we go. My number three, time is more valuable than money. You can get more money, but you cannot get more time. That's by Jim Rohn. So I love that because um, I think to me, you know, when I think and ponder about life, um, yes, we all want to be millionaires. We all want to have like these amazing bank accounts, you know, and we are striving for that. Um, but at the end of the day, time is really our wealth. Time is, is what's rich for me because I see my children and I see how much they've grown in just a few short time. And to me, it's, it's so telling of how like we cannot, we cannot rewind time. We cannot go back to when, you know, they were babies and, and that moment, those precious moments that thankfully I have on my phone or on my Google, you know, uh, Google photo, I have it. So I'm so thankful I have that, but I cannot rewind. 
much like, you know, life, like the way I think of life, it's more, um, whatever happened in the past happened in the past. There's no turning back. There's no like fixing it. Really. There's no, it happened. It's a story. It's a piece of history that's there. The only thing for me that we can do is learn from it. The future is way in the, like, it's, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen two days from now. I have no idea. So we have no inkling about what's going on on that side. So really what we can do is right now in this present moment, there's another mantra that I say, it's right here, right now, right here, right now. Because when we're in our mindset, we are thinking about the past and the things that we may have failed to do, the things that we regret or like, oh, I really miss, like I would say, I really miss when I was in my twenties and I, I can't believe I told myself I was fat <laughs> and I'm not that, right? So like, I miss that. Oh, I miss the times when I can go out like at 10 o'clock at night and just party, right? I can think of all of that. Yeah, that, that was a time, there's a season, right? Um, and then I can't think of the future, right? And so I have to tell myself right here, right now, because then otherwise I can, I can go all over the place. So that time is really important. Time is important. Um, we have no idea what will happen tomorrow. Um, that's a big thing for me. Um, so like I was just telling Helen, just before we got on this podcast, I'm going to eat that chocolate cake. I'm going to eat that ice cream because guess what? I have no idea what will happen to me tomorrow. And if I die tomorrow, then I then the, the day before I lived life because I, I chose joy. So time is important. Oh, I love that January. I just want to add like my little opinion here. Uh, <laughs> first of all, that's amazing. And as somebody who has seen personally how fragile life is sitting at the bedside of my mother while she's past, you know, terminally ill, dying and losing my brother. I was actually just thinking this yesterday while I was working out. I thought, I wish there was a time machine because I would, I would jump on it in a heartbeat to go see him one last time or to go try to talk him off the ledge. And I know we can't ever go back, but I thought, I, I actually think about the past quite often because I miss them. I miss my family. And I think to myself, and I share this actually with my sisters, this regret. And I said, you know, regret is actually good in a, in a positive way. If we look at it as this doesn't feel good to us, regret doesn't feel good to us. So we need to learn from it. And I told my friend, I will never put a job above my friends and family again, who mean the most to me. If I want to go see them in an important moment, because I, that's what I did in the past. And now look, two of them are gone. Three of them actually with my dad and I'll never get that time back. And it was suddenly, it was sudden you know, all of them pass suddenly. And I just thought to myself, I got to learn from this. And I, I, I'm about to get married. I'm in love with my fiance and it's the second half of my life. And I thought, I don't ever want to experience the loss of you, but it could happen. And because of that, how can we create better memories? How can we do more? How can we have more fun? How can we enjoy each other? How can we get over arguments more? You know, all these crazy things that I say to myself now, same with my siblings. I'm going down to Arizona, spend four weeks with them. I could have easily did the whole, I'm coming down just for the weekend. But I thought, no, I'm going to go spend time with my family and friends and enjoy them because who knows if I'll get this chance in the future. Yes. Wow. I love, I love that you put that into perspective because you're right. Um, I do miss my grandmother. I miss my uncles. I went, I would love a time machine so I can go back and say hi and talk to them again. I would. Um, but I also like that you said, well, regret is a lesson. It's a lesson. So it's not, I want to change that vocabulary. Yes, it's a regret, but now you can choose to use that as an opportunity to learn and to grow from whatever happened back then, you know, um, not being able to hang out with them and to spend time with them. And now you're doing it. You're going to Arizona and spending an, a month or so right over there and spending time with your sisters. That's amazing because you're right. We have no idea, you know, what will happen. And um, I love that you're not, you're, you're putting your family and friends 
first before work. Because work, I mean, just like what Jim Rohn said, I'm going to take it back to my number three. Time is more valuable than money. You can get more money, but you cannot get more time. So choose wisely. Yes, yes. Oh, I just loved, I really, really love this episode. January, thanks for, uh, it was January's idea, everybody. She's so awesome. <laughs> well, uh, thank you this was great I think it's um, always amazing to use positive words um, you know like I said there's so many things that are happening in our world today I mean I do want to um, just kind of give a shout not a shout out but to to remember like Maui you know and everyone that's going through mm -hmm. like such heartache and turmoil it's so devastating to see you know the fire just rip through that town and it's Lahaina and Kihei um, and I, you know, I can remember my family and I would, you know, have family vacations there and we would go to the restaurants. I bought like this amazing sand art um, over there. So there's like a lot of artists over there. There's restaurants and this amazing, the oldest banyan tree ever in the, like in the world, right? It's the oldest banyan tree and uh, it's gone. Um, I want to say it's charred and I'm hoping it's not completely gone since there's roots um, but it's going to take years for that tree to develop again. But that banyan tree was beautiful. I'm sure I have a picture somewhere of us next to that banyan tree. So um, I have friends who have lost their loved ones. Like they can't find them. So I have friends mm. who are still searching for their loved ones. Um, I have friends who were searching for their loved ones. Thankfully, they were found. Um, and there is a list out there and I, hopefully I can put it in the show notes um, for those of you who are listening and who are from Maui, have relatives and friends in Maui. There's a list um, that's going on that shows the names and if they were found or not found. Um, you can also add to that list. Uh, so I'll add that. So I do want to um, just remember, you know, everyone that's going through this. Um, the beauty of this all, though, is that I can see so many people like gathering together to try to help. like like right from the very, you know, start, like I see like all these people like, Hey, here's where you can donate here. Somebody made like a couple of people made two t-shirts that said, pray for Maui, show aloha for Maui. Right. And I, I just love that. Like um, our community here in Hawaii, our Ohana has like come together and really like moved, you know, towards like helping each other. And that's really the spirit that I um, even though it's such a devastating tragedy, I can see like the resiliency of, you know, our people, our, our kama'aina here in Hawaii. Um, so, um, yeah, so I, I think as Sexy Freedom Media Podcast, um, I'd love to show our support um, for Maui. I haven't quite figured out how, you know, like what we can do, but we love you and we are praying and sending some positive energy your way. So thank you all for listening. Appreciate you all. Um, please like, subscribe. Um, you can find me, JanuaryLadell.com, VIP Finance Builders on Facebook and on Instagram. Um, what I do is I handle tax-free retirement accounts and I rescue your 401k and your IRA from risk and volatility. Helen, what where can we find you? Yes, Helen Edwards. I actually do the same thing as January. So you can click on our show link. And like January said, thank you for talking about Maui. Uh, we'll also put that link in our show notes and you can get my book, Nothing Sexier Than Freedom. That's available on Audible and Amazon. Thank you everybody so much for, for listening. Please share this uh, episode. If you've been touched by it, please give us a five-star rating on Spotify or a review on iTunes. Thank you so much. Ahia. Aloha. Want to hear more? Duh. Visit us at sexyfreedommedia.com.